Now for a look at the lighter side of health care. Most of us enjoy a good laugh for its own sake, but it turns out that laughter may actually help us maintain health. And that has led some people to make a regular practice of it. Let's find out what they're laughing about. <laughs> Everybody give a big laugh in your room. Laughter. Medical researchers still haven't pinpointed the location of the funny bone, but they may have finally found proof that laughter really is good medicine. Dr. Michael Miller is the director of preventative cardiology at the University of Maryland Medical Center. He's been studying the health benefits of laughter and how it might help to combat serious medical conditions. We've known for a long time of the traditional risk factors that promote hardening of the arteries. So they include smoking and high cholesterol and high blood pressure, diabetes. There are not many positive influences that have the opposite effect. So the idea here is to try to uh, perhaps put our focus on what can we do in a positive way that may help to prevent or reduce the likelihood for the development of heart disease. Over the last several years, Dr. Miller's studies have demonstrated a direct link between laughter and healthy blood vessels. Well, what we were interested in determining was whether or not the inner lining of the blood vessel responds to positive emotions. And that is based on several studies, some of which did include senior individuals who responded in a negative manner to mental stress, which means that the inner lining of the blood vessel constricted or partially closed in response to mental stress. Dr. Miller's team artificially restricted the blood flow of healthy volunteers and measured the ability of the blood vessels to expand during different stimuli. What we found was, after watching a movie that caused mental stress, the majority of our volunteers had evidence that their vessel had a reduced ability to expand. In contrast, those uh, same people watching a movie to cause laughter, in fact, had their vessels open up 95% of the time compared to baseline. Dr. Miller's conclusion, a laugh a day may actually help to keep the doctor away. Two reasons for that. One or you may want to consider a more organized option. And most of us Sue Shield Bhatia is an entrepreneur from Framingham, Massachusetts, who preaches a regimen of laughter and yoga for health. He founded the Laughing Clubs of America and leads laughter classes all over the country. But for most people, uh, they can do the physical exercises for the neck or the shoulders or the legs and the calves and other things, but in order for anybody to focus on doing the massage and the exercise of the internal organs, one of the best ways to do that is through laughter. Because laughter combines the breathing and laughter combines the sort of internal jogging. And this is one way to do that with the laughter. Please stand up. Sushil yeah, has developed nice. a course which combines laughter with breathing techniques to relax the body and mind. <laughs> most, most of us have grown up with the notion that whenever we get stressed, somebody says, take a deep breath in and relax. So that's what, what we do. We start with the breathing exercises uh, that helps people to start to relax. They start to um, enjoy the movement of the breathing through the various parts of the body. And then slowly, they, they start to think about lighter things and we take them to the, to the laughter part of that. I think his actions somewhat precipitated a laughing from people too as well. Everybody was kind of hesitant at first, and then, then, then everybody just fell right into it. Sushil's class may look like fun, but don't confuse a laughter club with a comedy club. We do not use the jokes. Uh, we do not allow the use of jokes, because what happens is, no matter what qual kind of joke it is, somebody always takes offense to that. And secondly, when people are meeting on a regular basis, as we all know, slowly the quality of the joke starts to go down, and it gets worse and worse. So I said, no jokes. So we, we say, fake it till you make it. And when you start to fake the laughter, slowly the body doesn't know the difference. <laughs> That's great. Laughing allowed changes your outlook on life in that it gives you a lift. It gives you a lift. I, I think that there's not anybody in the world walking around that doesn't have a problem of some sort. Uh, 
if you really get to know them. And, and laughter, it takes you away from that and lifts you up. He puts out in such a good session that you can't help but laugh, even if at first it sounded like you're, you're straining to laugh because he wants you to laugh, but after you get going, why it just burst out <laughs> all over. Here to bring some more laughter to our day is Roz Treber, author of the book Live Life Laughing. Ms. Treber runs a company called Humor Fusion and has worked with senior communities, hospitals, and corporations on using laughter to alleviate stress, enhance health, and boost productivity. Thank you so much for being here today. I'm excited about this segment. We're going to laugh and laugh and laugh. What is Humor Fusion? Humor Fusion is really successful strategies for people under pressure, when, you know, all ages. And it's an opportunity for people to take their life and lighten up because we live such serious lives. We need to be able to use humor and laughter. Well, we absolutely do. Is, so it's not just geared toward mature adults? No, it isn't. It's open to everyone who has stress, you know, any kind of negative things going on in their life, but how to focus on the positive, on the joy of living. And that's what I'm all about, and that's what the people who want to hear me want to know. How do I enjoy every day? Well, I certainly love your disposition. Tell me, what made you start Human Fusion? I was teaching stress management in a college, and I learned part of the components of teaching stress management was about humor. And studying humor was laughter, as laughter is the you know response to something that makes you joy and motion of happiness and i just became so totally enveloped by this wonderful people to be able to smile to laugh to enjoy each other and not knowing how because when we're little kids it's great we laugh for nothing we play with rocks and trucks and toys and by the time we're eight years old Moms and dads and teachers say, wipe the smile off your face, get serious, grow up, get the answers right. And then it's only for entertainment that we smile or we laugh. You know, it's interesting that you say that. I know a lot of what was in the segment talked a little bit about the physiological side, but you're talking more about the psychological side and just like lightening up. It's important, right? Absolutely. The research is so compelling about the emotional benefits of laughing anything from a nice smile to a <laughs> downright rolling over and there's so many different degrees of this what happens to your mind and your body gives you reason to live and it's you brighten up everybody's arena wherever you come and people as they age they get either ailments or things they complain about now, you know people complain almost all the time. Absolutely. And the body doesn't like it. Not at all. Not so much, huh? Mm -mm. And you know what? The body talks to you. So now you've got a headache, a tummy ache, something's bothering you. And the So it becomes psychosomatic. You're it thinking, almost, you're not laughing, you're not enjoying yourself. Hence, you the, begin the, to have I mean, body the pain ailments. is there, but the body is trying to tell you, do something about this. And you must have no ailments whatsoever. <laughs> That's not true, oh, that but, but what, if I can just interject at this point, sure. when I was diagnosed with breast cancer, I had to, you know, walk my talk, mm. okay, because I was nuts before, but I had to, you know, embrace what I have and let the joy of living and focus on the positive take over, and that's what I teach and that's what I live by mm. in looking at, you know, what brings me pleasure? What makes me smile? Who makes me smile? And your body, emotionally, you feel good, you feel happy, mm -hmm. you feel uh, have more self-confidence, and um, you don't have these feelings of nobody likes me, you don't have feelings of depression. This type of, shall I say, holistic approach to living, when you put, uh, especially with people uh, who are aging, who for some of the aging process, we get arthritis. Some, you know, some things don't work as well as they did. Well, when you put people together to laugh together for whatever reason, they feel better. They get along better. You have camaraderie. 
and you have a whole different world and the body heals not cures sure it heals sure from a holistic side have you do you feel like you've been able to make an impact on other breast cancer survivors absolutely uh, you know what it is it's about giving people permission to enjoy life mm -hmm. you see when someone is going to have to rely on somebody else for if there's some help of some kind and they get a disease or a chronic illness they feel they're a burden they feel that they are maybe hopeless or helpless and that they don't deserve to have fun mm -hmm. or to enjoy well that's so wrong so that I'm able to give people permission to laugh after all, there's humor before an illness, there's humor after, there's joy of living before, you're no different. Yes. You're alive. You're alive. This Make is, every moment this is, alive. This is very inspirational. We're going to be right back in one second. It's time for another break. We'll continue the laughter and the conversation with Roz Treber after these messages. Do you know which takes more effort, smiling or frowning? Do you know which takes more effort, smiling or frowning? Answer, frowning. It takes nearly 43 muscles to frown and only 17 to smile. We've been getting firsthand experience in the therapeutic value of laughter with Roz Trebar, who makes people side shakes for their own good. Ms. Trebar recommends laughter as good medicine for stress, as a way to fight disease, and as a way to create a more productive working environment. Welcome back. One of the questions I have is you teach classes, right, specifically in laughter and awareness of laughter. What are some of your favorite stories about anybody that's incorporated laughter into their own life and it's made a difference? There are several, actually. In the classes that I teach, it's really about uh, humor education, uh, strategies to use mm -hmm. uh, for health enhancement. And, you know, stress is the second largest cost of disability in the United States and it means people 50, 60, 70 years old everywhere and what, what's important is that and we know that stress causes ailments especially mm -hmm. heart disease mm -hmm. well when we can put fun into our life and lighten up we can help prevent hardening of the attitude hardening of this heart kind of a thing so the people that I know and I've taught they will take some ideas and they will take either top tens or funny jokes, uh, inspirational funny things that they've read and they share it with their co uh, co-workers, they share it with family and the next thing you know people are laughing. So what does that mean? That means that their mood changes. You see when you put some fun and lightheartedness into a hard working situation or even if it's a sad situation at home you can laugh at it, take the pain and play with it. Mm -hmm. Then we lighten up, the mood raises rather rapidly. My friend, my mentor actually, a Dr. Ronald Burke, he's actually taught me a lots of theatrical um, approaches to humor to as I teach and also the fact that we can watch the funniest things and talk about how we're going to help you know make things much more comical or meaningful when we can bring some sure. um, humor to to the lesson sure well we then we like no matter how low we are we lighten up and what's important for people to do uh, it, no matter what age bring back that child in you and make a list Make a list. Make a list. Okay. Of the either the, your funniest and favorite comedians, uh, TV shows, radio shows. There are recordings now. If you're if you're old enough to remember the Bickersons, you know. Or, I know the Bickersons. You know, okay. Don't mean to age myself, right. but I know the Bickersons. But you know there are favorite ones, and if it's a Bill, a Bill Cosby, get them, watch them, do every day. It's the prescription, and I must tell you that peop there are doctors actually who will write a prescription for laughter, for laughter. you know do 10 well my big joke is 15 minutes a day you know it can just you know it, it, therefore you can save your sanity you, you're investing laugh, in yourself by you're laughing, investing right? in yourself absolutely but it's, there is a prescription for you know do find those funny things and do them every single day and and when it comes to communities assisted livings there needs to be activities at least every day that people are going to have fun together because people laugh more 
when they are with each other than by themselves. Uh, well, here's the thing, though. I know you wrote this book, Live Life Laughing, which I think is quite frankly, hysterical. I've been laughing ever since I opened it. I think it's great. But one of the things that I'm curious about is okay. tips. So tips for a viewer who might be at home, for instance. And I really like this Let the Fun Begin section where you say, what are the five funniest movies you ever saw? What are three of your favorite cartoon strips? Exactly. What are some other questions, tips that a viewer could potentially incorporate in their own life so that they can start laughing? Well, I call it the humor profile. So find out or identify, bring back what you laugh at, who are the people you like to be around because if there are people that you are around that really drain you or complain about everything say goodbye negativity out negativity positivity, out, positivity in, right. in. Mm -hmm. okay so now you want to engage in either watching those kinds of things going to uh, different fun events now I happen to be a lover of improvisation <laughs> okay well I understand you brought some tips some some props here for improvisation you call it your Joy Agra kit? Yes, I have a little Joy Agra okay, kit. Okay, can we do some show and tell? Okay, we'll do some show and tell. <laughs> okay, here are we ready? Here We're we ready. go. We this is, ready. you know, this is called the standing ovation. Cool. Give a clap, you know, just for who you are, <laughs> acknowledging how wonderful you are. Because, you know, when we get older, sometimes we need a little reminder that, hey, we are great. And when you get up in the morning, you go into that bathroom, no matter how much you have to wobble, and you push your lips and you say, I love you. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> Wait, do you, now, do you do this every morning when you wake up? Well, I do, but I also do it with people all the time because you, you know what? If you don't love yourself, whether you're sick or well, nobody else does you either. You are so right. Are you going to leave that okay. with me? I certainly am. <laughs> Will you get it for our whole cast and crew, please? I could. We would love that. And what's this, this red ball you've got going a, here? This is called the, really, it's, um, you know, the, uh, <clears throat> transdermal, red transdermal patch that people might think about, but here's what happens when you put that on. <laughs> okay? It is so hard not to laugh. <laughs> and when you feel low, you just put it on, look at yourself, and just walk around the house, walk around wherever. People will laugh. So, so wait, does your family think you're crazy? Absolutely. They... <laughs> well, Do you strive for that? Well, you know what? They, they, uh, my older son especially um, appreciated pretty early on. My younger son, he really, the mom, you're embarrassing, embarrassing me. me. Right, Absolutely. Right, right. But then he saw how people reacted and responded. And they, they smile. And you see, your smile is so important. It starts the chemistry changing in your body. And if you smile long enough, all of a sudden, your body will think you're happy. This endorphin thing makes sense, okay. right? Well, I, I need to at least make that very clear. It, it, it's all in the popular press. And, and you've read about some endorphin studies. They're not large enough to be convincing that this really happens. But what we do know is that mood changes, okay, almost immediately. And we, so we now are in a pleasing frame of mind. We're sharing it with our, it's for the moment. You know, it's funny you say that. My mother has told me in my whole life, she's always said, before you answer the phone, before you walk in the door, smile. Absolutely. And it is amazing how that impacts your conversation, the direction that it takes. Absolutely. What are other exercises that you use to stimulate laughter with your friends, your family, your clients? Okay. Well, people make funny faces, okay? But, you know, just being with other people, just being with other people, sharing funny stories that happen to you during the day, you know, when the toilet doesn't work and the water's overflowing, you know, it sounds awful at the moment, but, you know, you have to laugh because you're going to clean up and you're showing other people. And it, it's just that kind of a thing. Um, I have a, a new publication that I'm going to come out with, okay? I call it the Joy of Living Journal. And what I know is if you tell people, well, I welcome people to their amuse system. Accept the invitation to your AMUZ system and keep a record of all the things that make you smile, laugh, feel good, just joy, okay? Mm -hmm. And keep a record of that. And then after a week, write down what insights did you get about that. And you realize your life is pretty darn good, you know? It doesn't matter what you have. Today, you were able to laugh at the dog. The dog came and licked you on the face and made you feel absolutely wonderful. And listen, let me tell you, I do know of a doctor. You know, he had a patient who had a dermatological problem. He starts writing a prescription for the doctor, I mean for the patient, and the patient says, oh, my dog had to take those pills. And the doctor says, okay. And he says, well, can I take those pills too? Sure. Well, how long? Until you bark. <laughs> Okay, so, you know, there's so much fun going around that you oh, just don't let the funny get away. Being with people, sharing the activity, 
my when I talk about improv, I love to, to get people to just tell stories. Although we have to end this, you have lightened my day. You have made me laugh today, and I and I'm going to put you in my joy of journal living tonight. Thank you. And Thank you for being here. Wonderful. You're fabulous. Thank we appreciate you. your time. Thank you.